Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about Mancova and we're going to do a simplified version of it uh, within SPSS. It's going to be a tutorial of sorts. Uh, we're, not, we're going to assume that all of the assumptions have been met in order to run the Mancova to simplify the process for us today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here is the fictitious data set here. Uh, and we have a number of variables uh, that we're going to be looking at. The number of spoken languages in this adult population of 25 individuals here. Uh, so uh, this is a categorical um, labeling of sorts. So some of these people speak one language, others speak two, and then a few others speak three languages, again, in this adult population here. Uh, and then there are two dependent variables that we're going to be looking at. The first is efficacy, rated uh, basically from zero to 100, and then the other is utility. So uh, what's the importance of spoken languages in general to this adult population? So the utility of the spoken languages is rated here. And then our um, covariate is uh, motivation or um, intrinsic motivation specifically. And again, that's rated uh, between zero and 100. Uh, in this population of students. So essentially, we're going to be looking at how does the number of languages spoken uh, impact uh, student self-efficacy and utility of spoken languages when controlling for motivation. So without further ado, we're going to go into Analyze, General Linear Model, and click Multivariate. And there, again, we're going to be um, thinking about our spoken languages as our fixed factor, and then trying to combine both efficacy and utility as our dependent variables here. And again, while controlling for motivation, intrinsic motivation specifically, uh, and that's going to be labeled as our covariate. If we think about the model, again, we're going to be using a full factorial model. Uh, knowing that we've already met the assumptions necessary. If you didn't, you would want to go into a custom model and run that. If we go into plots, uh, we're going to try to look at the spoken languages on a horizontal plot and also click add there. And then finally, we're going to go into options and we're going to display the overall means. Um, actually, let's just do spoken languages for the means. We're going to look at descriptive stats estimates of effect size and homo homogeneity um, uh, tests there as well. And again, we're going to keep it at the 0 0.05 uh, significance level threshold. So once we have that in place, we're going to click OK and run the analysis. And again, the interpretation of the analysis is actually much more important. Um, because the, so to speak, the machine or the software actually does the hard work for you. If we look at the uh, uh, output here, we know that uh, 15 of these 25 students, 25 adult students that is, um, uh, speak one language, eight of them speak two languages and two of them speak three languages. If we look at their descriptive statistics, um, uh, in terms of efficacy and utility of spoken languages, uh, you see uh, a difference between uh, those who speak one language have a lower uh, efficacy in general than those who speak two, but then those who speak three is slightly lower than, than two, so that's interesting. Uh, again, we're not looking at statistics, uh, statistically significant data here, but just some means. And then the utility uh, seems to go up with the number of languages. What we're looking for in this uh, boxes test is trying to make sure that it is not significant here and because it is larger than 0 0.05 it is not significant so we can continue on without any interaction effects uh, in that nature. So because this is not statistically significant we're going to be looking at Wilkes lambda here uh, in terms of uh, does the combination of um, does the combination of these two factors, efficacy and utility, uh, impact uh, the number of spoken languages and so forth? Uh, if this was statistically significant, we would be looking at Palau's uh, trace instead of Wilkes lambda. So again, if we looked at Wilkes lambda, uh, the main um, part of this uh, table that we're looking for is this number right here. And because it falls below the uh, 0 0.5 threshold, we can indeed say that the uh, combination, again, of 
utility and efficacy did have a significant uh, impact on the number of spoken languages in this adult population. If we go further into Levine's test of equality, um, we're going to be looking uh, again here, efficacy and utility uh, are not, uh, do not have st statistical significance here in terms of error variances, which is good. So then we continue on to the test of between subjects effects. And if we look again at the number of spoken languages, specifically with, so we're breaking it down, not as a combination factor of efficacy and utility as done before up here, but separately. Uh, so again, we're looking at first <clears throat> within that uh, subjects and uh, I'm sorry, we were looking at between them and now that we're looking, we were looking at within that and now we're looking at between the subjects. So um, uh, specifically the spoken languages in terms of efficacy is a significant um, component there. So efficacy does have a significant impact on the number of spoken languages in this adult population while utility does not by itself, but the combination of the two back up here does. So that's an interesting uh, result there. We can look at estimated marginal means as well. Again, looking at the means, we kind of looked at that uh, previously. And then finally, if we look at the plots, it's interesting to see that as we increase the number of spoken languages from one to two, you have a significant difference in terms of efficacy, but the efficacy between groups two and three are not so much different. And then here, the importance or the utility of spoken languages seems to go up almost in a linear line um, in terms of as, as we increase the number of languages spoken. So again, that's a simplified version of how to run a MANCOVA. Again, when we're looking at trying to control for a covariate and trying to combine dependent variables to see their impact on an independent or a fixed factor. Thanks so much. I look forward to talking to you soon.